This lesson deals with supplemental problem 7.6. You can find this problem in the ECE 201 ebook in the chapter 7 supplemental problems starting on page 12. Given this one inductor circuit, which has a single pole, single throw switch, an independent current source, a dependent voltage source, and two resistors, can you solve for the voltage across the inductance and across the 2K resistor? This is still a one inductor circuit, so we can use the algorithm we developed in chapter 7. Now let's do those six steps. First one is to formulate the equations. I still have a first order differential equation, so the form of any voltage or any current is A plus B times E to the minus T over tau. Now since I have two variables here, let's use a one and two subscript. Step two of our algorithm is to find the pre-switching conditions of our variables, in this case V sub L and V1. I'm also gonna find the current in the inductor just before we switch. Because this can't jump instantaneously, I'm gonna use this to help solve my problem. Prior to the switch closing, we still have an open circuit here. We'll assume that the inductor is in steady state, so it looks like a short circuit. So the voltage across it's equal to zero. And then we're gonna solve for the voltage V1. With the open circuit here, there's no current flowing and no current coming back this way. So all of this four milliamps goes right into the 2K resistor. So the voltage will be equal to four milliamps times 2K. The milli and the case cancel and get eight volts. Step three is to find the initial conditions. Switch to change of state goes from an open to a short but the current that was flowing in here was zero prior to that switch closing, and so it must still be zero just after the switch closes. So that's equal to zero. Now, given that that current is zero, that same current flows in this loop. So there's no drop across here. So if we go around the loop then, we can solve for the voltage across the inductance. So the rise in voltage would equal the drops around the loop. So I've got zero here, plus V1 plus five V1. That gives me six V1. Now, since there's no current in this direction, then all of this four milliamps goes here. So again, I get eight volts for V1. So six times V1 would then be 48 volts, and that's gonna be A1 plus B1 times E to the zero, just A1 plus B1. Again, the voltage V1 is just equal to the four milliamps times the 2K. And that's gonna be equal to my A2 plus B2 times E to the minus T over tau, but T is equal to zero, so just A2 plus B2. The fourth step is then to find the value of our variables as t approaches infinity. And again, it's just five time constants. So again, the switch is closed, but now the inductor again returns to being a short circuit. So the voltage across it is zero, and that's gonna be equal to A1 plus B1 times e to the minus infinity over tau, just A1. Now with the short circuit here, and I have V1 here and five V1 here, that forces six V1 across the 12K resistor. All right, let's sum the currents at this node. So four milliamps is entering. What's leaving is V1 divided by 2K, and what's leaving is V1 times six divided by 12K. So our common denominator here would be 12. Let's multiply this by six over six times two. So I'll get six V1 plus another six V1. So I get 12 V1 divided by 12K. The 12s cancel. I can multiply the one K times the one milli and I get four volts is equal to V1. And again, that's gonna be equal to A2 plus B2 times E to the minus infinity. So just A2. So now I can solve for my Bs. Let's find the Thevenin resistance seen by the inductance with all the independent sources set equal to zero. So a current source is an open circuit, but I have this controlled source here and its value is five times this voltage. So I can't treat this like a resistor. So I need to apply a test voltage, measure a test current, or I could apply a test current and figure out the voltage. The ratio of these two would be the resistance looking back in. Let's go around the loop here. Now this current I test is gonna flow around this loop. So I'm gonna get a drop across the 12K so the rise in voltage is V test, and I have I test times 12K, but then I have V1 and I have five V1. So I have six V1. So I got V test in terms of I test, but also the variable V1. What is V1? That's the voltage across the 2K resistor, but I have I test flowing in it. So V1 is equal to 2K times I test. So I go back and substitute that back in then. So I have V test is equal to 12K I test, and then I have six V1, but V1 is 2K times I test. That gives me 24 times I test. So I can divide by I test, and so the ratio of V test to I test is 24K. The value of tau is L divided by R Thevenin, which would be two millihenries divided by 24K, and that gives me 83.3 nanoseconds. And now I can complete my problem. So A1 plus B1 was 48, A1 was zero, so B1's 48. So the voltage across the inductor is 48 times e to the minus t over tau, which is 83.3 nanoseconds. And that's true for t greater than zero. For t less than zero, we found that the voltage across the inductor was zero as a short. 
So I have a discontinuity here at t equals zero. So I go from zero to 48 volts and then exponentially decay back to zero. The voltage V1 is A2 plus B2 times E to the minus T over tau. We found that A2 plus B2 was eight, but we found that A2 was four, so B2 is equal to four. So four plus four times E to the minus T over tau volts, and that's true for T greater than zero. But we also found that the voltage V1 was equal to eight volts for T less than zero. When you plug in T equals zero here, you get four plus four times E to the zero. So there's a continuity as you pass through zero. Current through a resistor can change instantaneously. The voltage across it can change instantaneously, but this circuit has constrained the voltage across the resistor so it can't jump instantaneously. And that's possible, but it's not forced by the resistor itself. And this is supplemental problem 7.6.